Let's hear now from Philadelphia and we can speak to Diana Mutz, who is Professor of Political Science at the University of Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining us. Um, what's your take on the race uh, for that crucial seat, that Senate seat in Pennsylvania? Um, everything we've seen suggests that it's way too close to call. It's within the margin of error in the polls that I've seen. And what's more, it's very difficult to do accurate polling during midterm election years because turnout is far less predictable than it is in presidential election years. So it's anybody's race at this point. And when we look at the overall uh, likely outcome of the midterms, how much of an impact do you think it will have on Donald Trump's decision whether or not to go for another run at the White House in 2024? Well, I think the uh, assumption is that if people that Trump endorses do well, that means Trump will do well. That's, of course, not necessarily the case. There are states that are, you know, heavily Democrat or heavily Republican, so it really uh, doesn't matter too much. But there's a tendency immediately after the election to interpret it as a referendum on Trump. And um, I mean, I think that's inaccurate, but I know it's going to happen. Equally, if the Democrats endure heavy losses in these midterms, is there a chance that pressure might grow on President Biden to step aside in 2024 and allow someone else to take up the mantle of being the candidate for the Democrats? I think that's possible, but I don't think the result of the midterm would be what drives that. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, the, the party of the presidency always takes a dropping in the midterm years. Uh, the question is how much uh, of a drubbing do they take? So there's a tendency to lose a lot of seats in the midterms. We, we know that's the case. It's been true for all the previous presidents. So why it would be interpreted uh, as a stronger single signal in this case, it doesn't make much sense. I think we expected it. I think because of the Supreme Court's abortion ruling and the overturning of Roe v. Wade, Many Democrats got a lot more hopeful uh, that, in fact, it would not be uh, the loss of seats in the midterm that they were anticipating due to it being a midterm election. Um, that and inflation tend to be the things that people are really talking about the most. And given that the election here in Pennsylvania is so, so close, uh, you know, I, and the Senate in particular is going to be so, so close in terms of who has the majority, that is just seen as extremely important in the last few days before the election. And there is a real acknowledgement that the economy will very much be at the forefront of people's minds as they approach these midterms, isn't there? And we had uh, measures, for example, the, the writing off of student debt recently, uh, among other things. Yes, I think it is. But what has happened in the United States that someone um, like me who studies poll results and perceptions of the economy, what we've seen is that increasingly people's perceptions of the state of the economy are a function of their partisanship more than their partisanship is a function of their perceptions of the state of the economy. So people have ways of attributing responsibility to Trump's term in office, as well as to Biden's depending upon their predispositions. In American elections, people vote a straight party line so often that we're talking about changing a very tiny number of minds. I mean, under 10 percent of voters are likely to actually flip from one party to another. OK, Diana, thank you very much. Diana Mutz there, uh, professor of political science at the University of Pennsylvania.